Welcome to the Stoneworld Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Camry, and with me once again is Jacqueline Taba from International Stoneworks. How are you doing today? I'm good. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I am doing well. I am excited to have you on here. Um, you know, it's always good talking about restoration because it's one of those, I don't want to say fringe topics, but it's one of those things that just doesn't get talked about enough, I think, in this industry. Um, so I'm always excited to have you on here. But in case people didn't listen you know, the first time that we talked, which they really should go back, listen to that, then come back. Um, if you don't mind just giving a little bit of background yourself, a little bit of uh, history and yourself, just so that people know. So um, again, my name is Jacqueline. I'm with International Stoneworks. We are a company that strictly deals with stone restoration and maintenance. So we perform the service and we also sell stone care products. We're based in Houston. Um, and we have been in business since 1982. It's a family business. My father started it and I joined about 10, 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I started answering phones, but just never left. Awesome. That's fantastic. So you and I had talked a little bit um, recently at Coverings. And one of the things that we kind of talked about is is um, going through the process of a project, right? Trying to give a, a visual um, you know, a, a visual cue for a lot of, of listeners to this podcast. So you are sharing today a project with us. Um, and if you don't mind first, just kind of talk a little bit, you know, what is this project and kind of how did this process get started? So this, this is a project that we had just completed, um, around Christmas time last year. And it was, I mean, maybe my favorite project from all year because I always love intricate, fun, different projects. Uh, But this is the Holy Rosary Church in downtown Houston. So again, perfect timing with Christmas right around the corner. Uh, This is a special facade of an altar. Um, It is limestone. It was hand carved in 1934 by Oswald Joseph Lassig. And since it was carved in 1934, no one has touched it. No one has cleaned it, restored it. It is it's just aged in place. Mm-hmm. So the church felt like it was time since 1934 that they should probably, um, it's more than just a cleaning at this point. It needed a, obviously a professional company to come and restore such an intricate Uh, piece that they have, which is a focal point of that church. Um, Also, a fun side note about the Holy Rosary Church in Houston are my parents got married there. (laughs) So this was not just a cool project, but special to to my dad as well. All right, fantastic. So I know, um, you know, talking with a lot of fabricators that are interested in getting into restoration, one of the big questions is, well, how how do I get these jobs, right? Like, are you approached by the church or are you, well, I'm sure by now people know who you are, but I guess kind of in the beginning, you know, do people approach you or do you go out to these different places where you see some stone that's, you know, a little worn down you say, Hey, you know, we offer this service, you know, this is what we can do type of thing. So, so we are lucky enough um, being in business since 1982 that at least locally, you know, we, and there's not many restorers in our area. So Mm -hmm. For the most part, we are approached by the churches, Um, but I have to say that, you know, I'm definitely not opposed to going out and seeking jobs. Um, You know, I think we're all a little bit in sales. (laughs) And um, and so, you know, I think I think there is something to be said about you know, after um, completing a project, whether it's a fabrication project or installation project, that it is something that you can approach the customer about and say, hey, listen, it looks great right now, mm-hmm. but let's think about, you know, what is this stone going to look like in one year, two years, 10 years? Um, and it gets the customer thinking that because stone is a luxury material and it needs very specific care. Mm-hmm. And the customer not only needs to be educated about what is the material that they that they now have, you know, that they're walking on, that they're cooking on um, in, in their home or their building. Mm-hmm. And it's important for them to know how do I care for this material and, and what and what will it mean 10 years down the road? Mm-hmm. We always talk about the sustainability of natural stone. We talk about that it lasts forever. Mm-hmm. You know, the 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 pyramids in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 
there. Um, but it, it, and it's going to be there, but what do you want it to look like 10 years down the road? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I'm going to make uh, an assumption that a dream job would be to restore the pyramids of Egypt for you, right? That was <laughs> amazing. I actually, we actually took a trip, my whole family, we took a trip mm-hmm. to Egypt in March, 2020, Okay. right before the world shut down. <laughs> and we just made it to see the pyramids and we ended up having to leave Egypt early, but I got to see the pyramids. And of course my dad and I were like, oh, if we could just clean them. <laughs> Right? Like, I wonder what kind of goes through your head at that point. Like, you see the different parts of it, and you're like, okay, that's easy to do. Oh, that one's tough. Oh, that's a lot of work. Oh, that's easy to do. <laughs> Actually, what the, the, the one thing I went to see, which was truly amazing, was I went to Easter Island, and I saw the Moai statue, mm-hmm. you know, the big heads. Yeah. And they're outside. They're just exposed to the elements, and there was, like, bird droppings on them. <laughs> and I'm like, these must be cleaned. <laughs> Can I sell them my stone cleaner? Yeah, right. Like, you don't do anything to them. I'm like, but you got to clean this. <laughs> Billy, can I talk to the owner, please? Yeah, can I speak to the owner of the Moai, please? Because we need to talk about their maintenance of, the, of these Moai heads. Oh, my goodness. That's hilarious. Um, okay, so talking about this church specifically, with, with the photo that's currently being shown, um, you know, it, it, it looks like a brush on a drill is that what's going on here right we so it's limestone Mm. so we are restricted about you know what what cleaners we have to use we cannot use any acidic cleaners here because limestone reacts to um anything that contains acid ammonia Mm. so we are restricted we used um we used a neutral cleaner uh the called lavinette and we needed to do more than just a cleaning. We couldn't just clean it with a neutral cleaner and a cloth. It needed some sort of abrasive technique. Um, but as you can see, it's a facade mm-hmm. and it's so intricate, all the carvings. So what we did was we had a 20 volt cordless drill mm-hmm. with a brush attachment and it's a green drill brush, which means that it's a medium grit. And so that is actually the honing technique that we used in conjunction with the neutral stone cleaner. So when the pictures that you're looking at, we're spraying with a cleaner and we have the um, cordless drill with the brush attachment. And that is essentially the cleaning and the honing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how we were able to remove um, all of that embedded dirt, uh, ca- uh, candle fumes or whatever happened in yeah. 1934 um, that yellowed that limestone in time. And so that's that's how we were able to go about getting into all the intricate carvings of the facade is with that brush. Now, is it a pretty stiff brush or does it have to be kind of soft? It's me. It was medium. Okay. Um, couldn't be too stiff because, of course, this is like a, an amazing piece of art. It's a, it's a, um, you know, that we don't want to overly abrade. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also couldn't be too soft. The brush because it really had a lot of embedded, like soil in there for so many years. So we, we went with the medium grit. Mm-hmm. Um. At, at, and and we we did a little sample on the side and it it worked so well. I mean, you mm-hmm. when we were doing it, literally you could see um like the like the liquid that was just brown was just like oh. dripping like crazy. <laughs> now with the spray bottle, I mean, is it a a pretty substantial amount of water that you're putting on? Is it like a light kind of coating? And like how much how much water has to be put on this thing? So it's, it's not, it, we never really use straight water. It's, it's, um, that cleaner, the oh, lavender okay. comes concentrated and we dilute it. Okay. And, and it's, it's actually quite concentrated. So we, we dilute it a lot. So, um, you have to dilute it to where it doesn't leave a residue, but you don't want to over water it down. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, it's just a neutral stone cleaner. It, it definitely, um, you know, we have plenty, plenty in the market that are mm-hmm. wonderful. 
Um, and and it, it just, yeah, it wasn't, it, it looks like a complicated project because of the intricate carvings uh, and, you know, it's limestone and we, we do have to be gentle, uh-huh. um, but because we were restricted by what products we could use, not only because it was Um, a vertical surface and so and and hand carved but so we really couldn't use um you know a a, like we we couldn't use any chemicals um and we had the and of course we we couldn't use a powder compound or a paste because it just we can't leave residue in the uh carvings so that's why we had to resort to the brush Okay. So it was, I mean, it was just the two part process just, and, and at the same time, the squirting and the, and the brush. Okay. Now, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. So when I see a delicate carvings and whatnot, and I can't get in those nook and crannies, I kind of just shove it harder in there and I kind of hope for the best. I assume that's not what you want to do. <laughs> they, these technicians are amazing. Um, the supervisor on this project, he's been with us almost since the beginning, like he remembers when I was born. Um, (laughs) um, But yeah, he definitely, like, I guess like training has taught him, yeah, you can't, um, you know, obviously like, you know, we have insurance, but Lord, we do not want to damage that, that facade in any way. So, you know, it require, you know, has gentle and firm at the same time, you know, (laughs) enough force you know to get into the little crevices but of course have to be delicate because this is such such um, a beautiful piece in that church awesome and then um here we go we can see a perfect example of just i mean the difference because when you see the the right side if you just saw that as a whole yeah. piece, you'd be like that's not too bad it's not that dirty you can see <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's absolutely insane so how long did it take to do this um, I want to say, oh, just that side panel that, yeah. that completed, that took one day to complete. Okay. The whole altar took, um, and when I say the whole altar, let me be clear. We did the front, uh, the front facade and the two sides, mm. the top of the altar was actually wood. They didn't continue the marble over the top and the back was also, um, like hollowed out. Okay. So it was two sides and the front and the first day took the longest because, it was a little bit of trial and error just to make sure we had everything straight. But once we knew the technique, um, it was able, we, I think we, we completed the project in three days. Okay. Okay. And I mean, what we're looking at right now as far as tools go, I mean, this was it. There was nothing else that was really used. That, or anything? that is, you're looking at it. That, that was it. <laughs> Um, and we didn't, we did not seal this, uh, stone afterwards. Okay. Uh, just, I mean, you know what there we're big on sealing, but you know, there's a time and place, um, for that. And because, you know, this is not a surface that people walk on, um, mm. you know, it's just, and, and no one really touches it. Yeah. It didn't really feel necessary to do that. So it was just this cleaning and then the honing with the brush. Okay. Awesome. And then now we can see with this crest. I mean, this okay. is just yeah. amazing. That's the worst area <laughs> of the altar. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure how it got like that. But <laughs> you can see, obviously, um, the left side is the before and the whole side looked like that. And actually the partner, the opposite side looked just like that too. Mm. Um, and um, it honestly just took more elbow grease. Their process wasn't different, just took longer. Mm couple of passes to get all of that off okay now like you said you you didn't seal this or anything so is it mainly when you're judging that it comes from you know how much traffic it's going to receive right like if you're going to seal something or if it was a i guess more of a horizontal surface you would you would probably do it more often yeah i I honestly i think if um if it also included the the tabletop of the alt would have I would have recommended, hey, why don't we just seal this since this is a surface that you're constantly touching, you're constantly, um, you know, like putting items on. Uh, But in terms of the facade, it just really, I didn't feel like it was, and we all didn't feel like it was necessary. And the church was very enthusiastic, like, hey, hey, we just want to, we want to clean it. We want it to look nice. We want to use as little, um, you know, product as possible. Mm -hmm. And so it really suited everybody's needs i think not to steal the facade 
but I'm big on ceiling. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if it's if it's a lobby floor, if it's a kitchen countertop, if it's the shower in a home, um, you know, everyone has different views on this. I'm a, I always say annually, especially like if it's your shower, then yeah. you and, and you have one or two people that take a shower every day, um, or your kitchen and like I have, I have, um, I have a three-year-old and an 18 month old and I am, I like use my kitchen really hard. So <laughs> I feel it, feel it annually. If it's like the corner of a dining room that you never eat in, I yeah. say, okay, you, that can maybe slide, but <laughs> services that we just constantly touch or walk on every day. Um, I always, I always recommend annually. Okay. And then, um, so after you, you, you do this, right, you spray the cleaner, you, brush it i mean do you have to like wipe it down to get excess liquid off or does it evaporate or what so oh yeah like so you'll see at the front on that picture we covered the front with with plastic and, and blue tape because it was literally dripping off so okay. yeah they they had to um like wipe off any of the um of, of the extra liquids so we used like microfiber cloths mm -hmm. um to do that we i mean we also actually had a wet vacuum on hand uh, in case it got a little too wet, mm. but for the most part, we were able to, to cloth, a uh, microfiber cloth wipe off the excess liquid because it wasn't really a ton of liquid because all the liquid we were using was coming from the spray bottle. Okay. Okay. And then, um, you know, you talked a bit about, you know, practicing in the corner, right. To make sure that you have everything right. I mean, you, I assume would generally know like, okay, this is the best ratio of water to cleaner. Um, does it change frequently from project to project or is it just like roughly, it's always going to be kind of roughly the same thing. Well, for, for, for a neutral stone cleaner, um, it, it's always, it's always the same ratio okay. Okay. Um, because if you under dilute it, it's not going to clean enough. And if you, um, if you do, uh, sorry, if you under dilute it, then and it's too concentrated, it's going to leave a um, like a film, and mm. then you'd have to rinse it. Um, but I will say in other projects, uh, not not using a, a neutral stone cleaner, um, sometimes, uh, like, let's just say a flamed granite exterior entry, uh, sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll use a different type of cleaner for that. And 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 typically a brush also uh, mm. under a floor machine. Sometimes the dilution rate it needs to change based on like how much embedded dirt there is on mm. on the floor. But with this particular one, using a neutral stone cleaner, um, that 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 dilution rate is pretty much the same. Okay, awesome. And then I guess um, you know finally, you know if if you if somebody is somewhat new to this and doing a project like this, because you did say it's. Not that it's easy, but it's easier, right? It's an easier type project. Like, um, I mean, yeah, needed. There were, we, were, we were restricted by what we could use. Yeah. So it's just, I guess, any advice you would give to people that are, are getting into this stuff, you know, just kind of take your time, I assume, you know, go slow, do research type of thing. Yeah, well, you definitely want to do your research. I mean, well, if you're coming from the stone industry, mm -hmm. then I think you have like a really good background and you know, say like limestone or marble, it's not going to react well to acid clean. Um, so, so having that knowledge, is, it's a huge base, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you want to do your research. And then also it, the project required like just some common sense and some thought before going into it. Um, you know, you, you say, okay, um, I can't, you know, if I use a powder compound mixed with water, then it's going to leave like when it dries it might leave like a powder residue and then I have to go back and clean it mm. uh, which makes my life harder and makes the job last longer um, I'm spending more time there so you know it we kind of had to step back and say okay um, you know what can we do that you know that won't cause us to leave a residue and we'll and we'll keep the job moving you know we can we can complete this faster and so but just by taking a step back and just thinking like what kind of honing technique can i use here which makes sense for this project mm -hmm. you know just a little thought and a little powwow with the supervisor you know it, it seemed natural to use like a drill brush right all right. Awesome. Well, Jacqueline, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to, talk to us and uh, walk us through this because this, this stuff always fascinates me. I think it's really cool stuff. So I just really want to thank you for you know taking the time to be here today.
Oh yeah, I this like I said, this was one of my favorite projects, and you know we do plenty of like lobbies and countertops, but this was something different that we got to do, and we really enjoyed the process. So, and thank you for talking to me about it. Of course.